Today on People Are Talking, guess who's coming to dinner now? We are talking about black women who prefer to marry, prefer to date white men. Cheryl Foreman is one of these women, just married to a white man in August. And you have dated both. You tell us you prefer white men. Why? Uh, when I was dating, there was a difference in uh, the attitudes when I was going out of the black men. A lot of the music that I liked, they didn't like. Um, a lot of the clubs I liked to go to. A lot of black men I don't think feel really comfortable in a club where there's not other black people around. Um, and that made a difference. Would you say that the white man dated you better than the, and treated you better than the black man? To me, they did. All right, we're going to talk about this controversial issue today, and we want your opinions at 481-1313 on People Are Talking. Oh, come on, folks, for God's sake, we have quite a crowd here, a lot of... Yeah. This young, attractive woman next to me is Dr. Gwendolyn Goldsby Grant. She is a psychologist for Essence Magazine. She is also a certified sex counselor. Yes. And she has an awful lot to say about this subject. Would you all welcome Dr. Gwendolyn Goldsby Grant. What do you think about what was just said, that, that after dating both, she discovered that uh, the black men just didn't treat her as nicely as the white men. That's exactly what I hear. I used to hear that on my radio show. I had a radio show up in New Jersey. And those were the responses that I would hear on the radio at night. Uh, women tend to say that. And I think it has a lot to do with also finance. Uh, a lot of unemployment in the black community. And the kind of treatment black women are looking for, they can't find because they can't find black people's money. It gets funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, therefore, a lot of this has a, a, a economic base in this country. Uh, and, of course, some of the things are attitudinal. Um, black men, sometimes they bring to a situation a lot of hostility because of what they've been through mm -hmm. in the country. And it bears on, on personal relationships. Are you agree with that? Yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. A lot of times it, there's a lot of posturing that yeah. goes on that they do. A lot of, um, yes. I'm here. That's know. because a white man's manhood is a foregone conclusion. Okay? In some and, and, cases. and my brothers are ever in pursuit of their manhood. Mm -hmm. Okay? So a lot of that has to do with that. All right, meet our married couple. This is Levon Elder and Doug Elder. They've been married for five years. They are a mixed couple. But it, to look at you guys on television, you'd never know it. One of you claims to be black and one of you claims to be white. <laughs> I'm having a tough time telling, but uh, but what it says on paper, Levon, is that you are in fact a black woman. Mm -hmm. Now the, I mean, the audience is wondering too. You don't, you don't look <coughs> black to me, and I'm sure to anyone watching this show. Mm. Are you black? <laughs> <laughs> yes, both of my parents had a black parent and a white parent. And so, according to the social definitions over the last, well, many, many years in this country, I'm considered a black person. Legal definitions also. Yeah, yeah but do you think if, if you were a darker complected woman that things would be the same. I'm sure in many, if not most cases, you are not seen or perceived as being a black woman. Is that true? Probably. No. Right. So your question is, would it be different if I was yeah, darker? So have you, I'm sure you've wondered, if you were, for instance, mm -hmm. uh, darker, what would you do? How do you think things yeah. would have turned out for you? You know, that's real hard to say because mm -hmm. I'm not. And mm -hmm. so, I, you know, I can't, I've never been in those shoes, so I really cannot begin to say how my life would be different or if it would be different. Most people in the black community grew up with this. Am I right, mm -hmm. audience? Yes, sure. We, we all have a collection of an assortment, an array of colors in our culture. My father looked white. He walked in the room. He looked like uh, David, Niven. David Niven, the actor. Um, my grandfather was white. I, so we grew up with this. We were very used to it. And even uh, those of us who pass, remember that word? Pass. Those of us who pass, the rest of us recognize. As a matter of fact, some of us allow our brothers and sisters to pass because that's what they chose to do. Was that some okay? Was that okay to pass? I mean, do you? We would allow you. We would ignore you. We would pretend we didn't know you if that's what you wanted. You know, my father didn't want it, but those of us who wanted it, we allowed each other to pass for economic reasons. Am I right, audience? Because I know I'm going to get support. This is on like this. a church group. Yes. 
Uh, <laughs> this is good. Right. We need to get get a will of pulpit in here and let her just get That's up there right. and, and handle it. I speak from pulpits I bet on you Sunday do. morning. We have yes. a choir over Black here. It's gonna, it's to, <laughs> go ahead. I was going to say it, it probably would have made it more difficult for our relationship to work out if if Levon had been darker, as far as my family was concerned, because they were, you know, much more accepting of her because she was lighter, and I. I'm sure it would have been more of a problem if she was darker. Now, did you tell them right away that you were dating a black woman, or did you? No, I didn't. You didn't? No. Oh, no. The brothers and sisters it's here aren't happy <laughs> about that. But well, I, I didn't really think, you know, it was an issue that Well, we, we discussed this, and we decided that we didn't need my family's approval for uh -huh. us to marry, and we didn't need his family's approval for us to marry. And it was not an issue for us, and so we weren't going to sit down and ask permission. And so um, we decided if it did come up, we would, we would respond to it. Well, how would it ever come up? I mean, if, if, well, if it we had this show, we're about yeah. a pretty. <laughs> it, what? Came, it came up. Oh, when did it come up? Well, uh, there was a remark made by Doug's grandfather at one point. Uh, what did he say? It was a negative um, comment about. What was the comment? I think something um, about uh, nigger blood. And so we had to uh, get him straight about not using those kinds of words and terms around me. Did he at that point know that you were a black woman? He knew afterwards. I'll bet he did. <laughs> I'll bet he hurt for weeks. He, uh, All right, go ahead. He apologized. He and was he was he really he was gracious. He sorry, and about he would it. not. You know, he would didn't want to hurt, hurt my feelings, and so. Basically, that's how it went. And, of course, we knew that this was going to come up eventually. Now, in reading some of your background material, it, it says that the marriages between black men and white women are decreasing and that marriages between black women and white men are definitely as a fact, on the increase. As a matter of fact, Essence did a piece on that. Oh, did you? Back, back did you bring in April. a magazine to show us? Oh, yes. Right here it is, right here. <laughs> um, we did a piece on that, and we found that the marriages are uh, increasing according to the uh, census reports between black women and white men. And um, as a matter of fact, I think there's something like 45, between 1980 and 1984, uh, there were um, something like 45,000, and now there's something like 64,000 marriages between black women and white men. Why do you think it's on the increase? I, I don't think, I think those are just statistics. I think it's been going on all along. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, whether the marriage took place or not, we have 300 years of record here of myself and of my posterity looking different ways with green eyes. It's been going on a long time. Take a look. These are green eyes and they are not lens in my eye, in my head. <laughs> Real ones. And they come from my white green grandfather. Eyes, really? Yes. Uh -huh. Take a look, if you so will, at some of these pictures. We have pictures of some mixed couples with white men and black women. You might recognize some of these people and be uh, somewhat surprised that Whoopi Goldberg, I'm, I'm sure you probably know this, is married to a white man, uh, David. Pleasant, is it? And uh, Robert De Niro, this is his wife, girlfriend, Tonky Smith. Diana Ross, of course, is married to a black man. This is, uh, this is just uh, a couple you may not recognize, the fabulous Edgar Bronfman, Jr., and his wife, Sherry, just a pretty couple. And money. Money, money. <laughs> <laughs> and Diana Ross and her husband. And then, of course, there's Diane Carroll and Vic Damone. Just, uh, just married. So there, there are some Alfred pretty. Woodard. And, and others, too. Yes, quite a few others. How did you find, very specifically now, because some of the, some of the black men in the audience were, were taking offense to the idea that you're suggesting that, that, a, that in general, as far as you're concerned, mm -hmm. white men treated you better, knew what to do, knew, knew how to order in restaurants, knew how to be more polite. Be more, be specific, because I want some of, these, some of these black men want to take issue with you later. Uh, specifically, there was a difference. Um, like I said before, the posturing and, and the places that I wanted to go to, different nightclubs. Um, but forget where you went and the mm -hmm. music that you listened to. That's all a matter of taste. Mm -hmm. I'm talking specifically about things that made you say, you know, those guys are a lot nicer than, than the black guys are. That's a lot of the social graces, I think. Conversation. Like what? wise. Um, I had a lot of black guys that didn't want to talk about politics or things that were going on in the world. They wanted to talk about um, drugs or who, you know, what other women they had before and just some general things that I, I really wasn't that interested in mm -hmm. to talk to them about. Did they uh, treat you any, any differently in terms of being polite or, or sociable or were they more gentle? 
to me, the white man was more gentle to me and more concerned about how I felt about things, about, um, <laughs> about how things were with me personally, like with my job, or not so much self-centered on himself as involved the two of us. Mm -hmm. All right, when we come back, a lot of you have been holding on the phone. I know some of you have opinions. This guy in the, the three-piece suit is about to jump out of his uh, suit. We'll be back in a moment to take your call. Thursday at 9, renowned fertility expert Dr. Sherman Silver tells you how not to get pregnant. For free tickets, call 664-3000. All right. Thank you. Caller, you're on People Are Talking here on Channel 13. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hi, Richard. My name is Eugenia. I'm a black woman, and I believe that blacks should stay with blacks, whites should stay with whites. What it is, the black people that married to these white men, they do not know how to deal with they self. That's all that is. And um, on the other hand, when they go out they race and marry other people, it's just showing that, and I, and the, I know the black girl, she said that, um, she married to a white man because the black men didn't know how to deal with her. What it was, she didn't know how to deal with herself. She had low self-esteem about herself. The one that's sitting beside her had low self-esteem about herself. She looked like she's white anyway. So it really don't matter with her. All right, hold on a second. What do that's you say, LaVon? Well, an that's, interesting comment. that's an interesting comment that it really doesn't matter with me. And the thing is that interracial relationships started many, 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 many years ago. And this is not a new thing that's happening. And uh, in fact, 80% of black people are racially mixed right. somewhere mm -hmm. in the background. And I think it's, it's in a way a sign of good self-esteem to be able to relate to people of your own group and people of another group. The thing about it, caller, is that it's you so, sound... Uh, Go ahead. Started, what caller? When it started many years ago, we did not have no other choice. Point. The white man was coming and forcing himself on us. We did not want them then, and we don't want them now. You just don't know yeah. how to deal with uh, yourself, she, She's baby. talking facts, because the message... You Anthony better go back and Hold on, read. hold on, caller. <laughs> just relax. You're well. talking facts, all right. Very strong historical facts, because anti-miscegenation laws were just cut down as of 1967 in this country. Mm -hmm. And she's right. It's been going on a long time. Uh, black women heretofore had no choice in the matter. Uh, my grandmother was taken. Mm -hmm. Uh, my great-grandmother was taken by a white man, but here we are. Now these people are making choices about their, their mates and their partners. And let's, let's, let's talk about the media pre presentations. I mean, we, we are inundated with white information and white faces, and pretty soon somebody's going to want one. You know, just based on the conditioning yeah, process. But, right, yes. but this, uh, this caller got personal with Cheryl and, and uh, Yvonne. Well, I just wanted to say Yvonne. to the caller that I, I do have a very high self-esteem. I'm very proud of myself and I'm very proud of my husband. And I'm not any less black because I'm married to him. I mean, that, that's my opinion. I that's believe how I feel. When, when, races, when different races go and marry different, other different people, I believe they've been thrown out of their race. And I believe you were thrown out of yours, and that's why you married a white man. Yeah, yeah because it, it's seen as a sign of disloyalty. Uh, it, it is. Mm -hmm. Well, how many of you in this audience feel that if a black woman marries a white man, they're being disloyal? Raise your hands if you believe that. How many of you don't believe that? How many of you don't believe that? Okay, let me, let me ask you a question. Why don't, why don't you believe that? I believe that no matter what color you are, if you're in love with somebody, you should marry that person. Okay, now what about this woman who suggests that that uh, both of our guests have married white men because they have low self-esteem and and well i feel for her she should check her esteem because these people have a right to what they want to do caller what if you are you married well it doesn't matter what you are but i'm married and i'm married to a black man and i love him dearly i'm sure you, know you do i'm yeah. sure you do but the, the question is that if uh, if by a fate you you were to break up with this and, what and let me tell you black people are very liberal we have taken the children from these relationships over the 300 years and taken them into our own when the white community rejected them i mean we took we are very loving people uh, we're, we're african americans remember that all right caller anything else no all right thank you <laughs> i'll bet good morning caller you're on the air hello yes line one hello yes you're on the air yes speak Richard? yes ma'am my name is Vera. Yes, Vera. Um, the first caller, that lady that you had on there, 
with the um, high self-esteem and all of that. Hello? Yeah, Vera, turn down your television set, okay? Okay, hold on. Everyone watching who's on the line, turn down your sets. Okay, Vera? It's TV's next door. Vera? Hi. Yes, you're on the air. Speak, speak a little more rapidly if you can. Okay. Um, that lady, that first, this first caller. Yes, Vera. That was on there. Um, I feel like she's being a bigot. You know what I mean? Because I also date white men. You know what I mean? I feel the way Cheryl does. You know what I mean? Um, to me, white men treat me a lot better. How? You know what I mean? They, um... They're interested in what I'm interested in. They do what I want to do. You don't think there are any black guys out there that are interested in what you do? Um, sure. I've dated black guys. You know what I mean? I also got raped by a black guy. But then there was a white guy that consoled me. You know what I mean? That made me feel like a person again. Okay, wait, hold you know on a second. I mean? You have to understand um, that white men are also raping people too. But hold on. Yes, go ahead. Yes, I know that. Just a minute. He just, just made me feel better. I understand that. You know what I mean? Yes, um, I know what you mean. <laughs> Hold on just one second. Interest. I'm not trying to be rude, but, but th this gentleman has been jumping out of his chair. Um, uh -huh. To the show. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, the statement you made was an uh, overgeneralization of black men. Uh, you were saying no, that. No, in my experience, the men that I met, the okay. black men that I right. met, mm -hmm. the generalization of them. Okay, well, what I wanted to know was that don't you think that there were some black, or there are some black men out there in the public that probably could have uh, suited your needs? Do you think that's possible? Yeah, anything's possible. Okay, that's do you think possible. that you could have had patience to pursue this uh, type of need, or do you think it was out of just frustration, out of the fact like of self-esteem? Like I had no other choice that I, I went with my white husband? Is that what you mean? No, 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 no. I'm saying before you went to your white husband. Be a little more patient think. and just sort of little sample little, what's yeah. out there. Right. And maybe you could have found a, a black man that could have, is what he's saying. That's possible, but, uh, but uh, if my that personal was choice me. was. If, if that was possible, then how come you didn't have patience to do that? Either you wanted to try the other thing or you just wanted, just frustration made you just bail over the other way. Well, first of all, I didn't just try the other thing. I, it just <laughs> happened. I mean, I just, the places that I was going, the men that I was meeting and that I liked just happened to be white. I could have, tell, told, I could have uh, uh, explained to your club that you could have went to uh, that were some yeah, decent sure black men that had like that. conversations about politics, about uh, stock market. You mean you talk about sure. things other than drugs? Oh, yeah, <laughs> sure. Oh, man, sure. 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 Well, what right. I think, what I think is so interesting is when black women begin to date white men, is that the c comparisons come up. You know, yeah. when you make your choices, I don't think the comparisons are necessary. This happens to be your choice, but that that's when you get this these kinds of discussions going on because black men feel that is a put down. Mm -hmm. You know, when those things are said, the person may not mean it as a put down, but that's how it is interpreted. All right, we're going to be back in just a moment, and we're going to take more of your calls. Thank you. Friday at 9, feast your eyes at some of the weirdest models in the USA. For free tickets, call 664-3000. All right, we're dialing for dollars. We're seven from the bottom, $386 in our jackpot. Seven bottom, 386, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. The last four digits on this call, 4988. 4988, seven bottom, 386. Next Wednesday on People Are Talking, we are going to bring back one of the truly greats from the old days of the Baltimore Colts. Now, we want to fill up our studio with old Colt fans because we have... Hello? Hello? That's impossible. person picked up the phone started dialing. Didn't say anything to me. Well, we're going to add $13 to the jackpot. Next call worth $399. $399. If you were a Baltimore Colt fan in the 50s and 60s, would you pick up your phone right now and join us next Wednesday on the show as we welcome Fatso, Artie Donovan. That's right, he's a Hall of Famer. His book is called Fatso, It Is a Riot. You've probably seen him on Late Night with David Letterman. Artie was supposed to be on here first, but there was a problem in his scheduling. He'll be on next Wednesday on People Are Talking. The number to call 664-3000. You are gonna cry from laughter when you hear some of Artie's stories. And I can only tell you this, we have some surprises planned for Artie and for you. One week from today, Artie Donovan 
One of the greats of the old Baltimore Colts. Seating is limited, so call 664-3000 right now. And welcome, Artie. 664-3000, call. You have busily taken all of this in. I've watched your body language change during the course of this hour. What, what is on your mind? Okay, first of all, my husband is white, okay? And I don't, I think that love doesn't come when you want it to come. It comes when it just happens. So whether the person at the time happened to be black or white, it doesn't matter. Um, I also think that has nothing to do with self-esteem. It does have a lot to do with economics. It also has to do with education and um, some other factors, because I'm a professional person. And when I meet um, black men, I'm not saying that there are not educated black men, but a lot of times men are threatened by me. Okay, they feel as though that I'm a you very- mean, You mean black men are Black men are threatened by me. They feel as I'm very aggressive. They feel as though that I have more than they have. They feel like I should take care of them. Um, they, they talk down to me. I guess that's to, to make me feel bad about myself. And that's not. You're having a tough time. Right now. <laughs> yes. Who else I'm is sorry, but that's just my opinion. And I have dated both. I've dated um, you know, white and black. And I, you know, I have no qualms in dating um, other races and nationalities and that sort of thing. It just you know, happened to be the person at that time. But, and, but mm -hmm. were you treated nicer, do you feel, or in a, in a gentler or more tender by the white person in your life rather than? Yes, I feel with more respect. Yeah. You know, they respect me for who I am. I'm not saying, it's just been unfortunate the black men that I have met did not give me the respect that I felt as though I was entitled to. It's not a question that um, there are not black men out there because I deal with black men in my profession, which is insurance. Mm -hmm. And they do give me the respect because they know that I'm capable of doing just as much as they do. But it's not to say that they date me in that same light. Okay, now Lee, thanks. Lee, you have... I'd like uh, to... Uh, yeah, go ahead. Then I want to talk to uh, Yvonne. Go ahead, Yvonne. When, when Levon and I were dating and and getting together, we didn't go through any of this comparison like a uh, white person's better than a black person or a black person's better than a white. Uh, what, what really happened between us was, was our love for each other and that was the most important thing that uh, You had what I call a together. visual aid. If you get Elaborate, come on. Get visual, he had a visual aid. He didn't, he didn't have to deal with uh, the color issue per se. Well, you know, visual aid. I, I have dated yeah. other individuals but I mean, that, in that particular yeah, that's age. That's that are in di different races. I have I dated uh, uh, Orientals, Hispanics. See, color, Hispanics in this color, well. racism is based on color. In this period. country, yeah. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, they, they sent for a Swedish sociologist in the 1940s to study it and make sure that we got it right. And they, his name was Gunnar Meyerdahl, mm -hmm. the American Dilemma. And this the whole business is based on color. Uh, we even have color caste class system among ourselves as, as blacks, coming from slavery, the house nigger, field nigger syndrome. The lighter nigger being more intelligent because he's closer to being white, and the black one belongs in the field and should be a laborer. Right. So we have a lot to fight against to get ourselves straight. What do you think? Um, this is what I think. Um, my uh, daughter, I, my oldest girl, is a professional. And she's having a problem trying to find a, a mate. Right. A, a, a mate of, right. of black race? Yes. Of the black race, right. right. She has been through a lot. She has dated black, she has dated white. And it seems that the blacks that she has dated are of the same caliber that the, the lady who said she's a professional um, has dated. Okay. And uh, then she, the white, the blacks that she has met who are on the same level of her that she is on, or above, econ economically, uh, are interested in the white women. Yeah. Uh. So she's still having a problem. What are we going to do to fix that, Gwendolyn? One of the things we're going to have to do to fix that is to start doing some homework in our own homes, the way we raise our children. Um, about about race and white people are going to have to do work, the work too because this is all the, all of this has to do with the way they constructed this system okay this racist system and we've got to we've always talked about what we have to do in the black community the white community has a lot to do also 
Uh, I think the white community has done its children and its posterity a disservice teaching them racism in a multicultural world. Mm -hmm. That's why we can't have peace in, on this, con on this uh, planet, because we have this whole issue of white supremacy. I mean, to make a person think that because they have a certain skin color that they are supreme in the world, that's the, that's the biggest uh, piece of nonsense since uh, Hitler did what he did in Germany. Caller, you're on the air. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, I'm calling about your question. Yeah. Uh, I don't really agree with it myself. What What are you answering? Uh, what don't you agree with, Caller? Racial marriages. Okay. Can you elaborate a little bit, or is that all you wanted to say? Did you, you want to give us a reason why you don't agree with it? Oh, okay. You take uh, the Lord, you know, he made separate races, which I feel should have, uh, Here we go. you know, they should just the stick Lord. together. Stick together? Mm -hmm. Are you married, sir? Yes, I am. And you're married to? A white person. Right, and are you also a white person? Yes, I am. Okay. Have you ever dated a black person? Uh, no, I haven't. All right, go ahead. Well, I mean, I have a lot of friends the... that are black. And, uh, you know, it's never crossed either one of our minds. Don't forget the theological base for this, okay? Don't forget the curse of Ham, okay? And don't forget that, that slavery was based on um, servants obey your masters. And that if you're white, you're right, and if you're black, get back. Yeah. Now, you guys, the elders, thanks for your for that call. The elders, you met uh, through a dating service, is that correct? Mm -hmm. That's now, right. Did you know at that time that she was black? Uh, was that not on the... Uh, yes, I did. She had a written profile that you know, said that she was black. So I, I did know that she was black when I started dating her. Now, we have, uh, we have a couple of people from dating services. Do you, do you, do you find that you're, uh, you're both in dating services, right? Yes. Different than both of you. Are, are you are you mixing and matching, and how's that working out? Yes, we are, but we have a different type of service. We let them choose through video. You mean you? What's your place called? The Dating Solution. And you look at tapes of people. You can, uh, for a fee, you look at a certain number of tapes, and you pick dates. And yes, sir. And have you 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 have fixed black women and black white many men? Many time, and, many time, yeah. many time. The trend is that the black women are looking to date white men. All right, that's what Gwendolyn said. Yeah, that because we're becoming upward, upwardly mobile. We're, we're there in the workplace with them now. We're no longer in the kitchen where they used to take us to the bedroom from the kitchen mm -hmm. without our consent. Yeah. Uh -huh. your, and your name is? I'm Carol Scott. What's your service? Together Dating. Is that a video service also? No, it's a personalized service, and there's nine offices in the area. And what you find is it's more geared women, black women want to date white men, and it's the education, and it's the financial end of it. And the more educated a person becomes, we feel, or the members are saying, that the racism decreases, you know, and uh, it's not an issue. She's talking about the economic leveler in this country, right. the equalizer, money. Right, exactly. The basic exactly. issue in this country really it isn't black and white, it is green, the haves and have-nots. And the black women want men that are more financially on their level, and they just mm. feel there's more white men than there are black men. That's very insulting, though, to black men, isn't it? I would think of so. Of course. But, but this but whole country is exactly black wait, wait. men. Just a second. <laughs> Sir, stand up. Just a second. That's a good comment. What did you say? I said it might sound funny, but it is true. Yes. That's all I got to say. We'll be back yeah. in a moment. <laughs> On Monday's show, we'll take you inside the PTL. For free tickets, call 664-3000. Um, Susan has something else. Susan has something else she wants to say. I just want to say that uh, my friends tell me that they have a preference among black men. They say they prefer black men. They say the blacker, the better. Okay. And I feel that as an American and, and, and a person, I should be able to prefer whoever I want. You know, if I prefer white, then I prefer white. If Absolutely. I prefer black, I prefer black. But in my opinion, it doesn't matter as long as that person can respect me, he's intelligent, cares about me, and, and most important, have money. Because I have dated. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious, because money can play a big part in, in dating. It can play a big part in marriage. And love cannot operate without money. What's your problem? Yeah, but problem? See, you see that, Richard? She said finance. That's, Don't sit down. That's good. That's real good. But... 
love suffices everything. See, love will bring on money, and you have to start off with love first. Well, I can tell okay? you, we are now, not you have to start. You have to start loving first. My you start with this finances. Hold it, hold it. You start with the finances first. Mm -hmm. It's based on superficiality. It's not real. All right, go ahead, Tasha. And if you don't have money, you don't have a relationship. All right. right? That's what you're saying? All right, hold on. My husband and I are now, like, practically broke from the wedding, so it's not money. It wasn't based on money. It was a beautiful wedding, by the way. Thank Let's you. open up your wedding album for just a moment and look at a couple of pictures, because it was really a pretty wedding. It you were a very pretty bride. It wasn't based on money that we got together. It was based on mutual respect, and I loved his personality, and he liked mine. You know, we love each other. It's not money. We're struggling now. Okay, I understand that, but you're probably a few, okay? I'm talking about there's a lot of interracial couples that, you know, they got together because they had a lot of money, and they saw nice things, let's make it together, me and you, honey. And it's, it's just a superficiality romance. It's based on money. And after the money, honey, it's over. All right, hold on. You wanted to ask no. uh, LaVon a question. I just wanted to know if she ever dated a black man. Most of my life, my dating life before I got married, I did date black men. And in fact, I don't have a preference for black men or white men. It happened that I was ready to get married and I met my husband at the time that I was ready to get married. I don't have a preference. And I find I have a counseling center in Los Angeles, California for interracial couples and interracial families and, and uh, parents of biracial children. And I find that overall people don't uh, choose to, aren't looking for someone of another race when they get married. It happens that that person is in their lives either through work or uh, some social, something social and they end up falling in love and getting married to each other. It just happens. No, wait, what'd what you say? Wait, hold on a second. Wait, wait, hold it. Stand up. Rob? I said, it seems you got a problem getting me on the tube here. Uh, uh, I, I think that the situation is that black women are putting, are putting white men on pedestals uh, uh, because of their color, I think a lot of it is. Uh, Does that bother uh, you, sir? No, no, but I'm thinking, I'm thinking they shouldn't do that. They should be more matured. Uh, 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 black women seem to be more carried away with white guys' color than white guys are themselves. They don't care that much about their color. Why y'all laying in the sun? Well, getting well, suntans, you know? Uh, we don't understand getting carried away with y'all's color. We get more carried away with y'all's color than, than y'all are. But my, my, <laughs> wife, my wife just said that... And, and, another, and don't ever forget that, you understand? <laughs> and another, another thing, I think our problem is cultural. We refuse to accept our culture. We're the honest people in the world that will have nothing to do with our culture. Right. We got to be tripping. Right. When everything has been taken away from you, your language, your culture, you have to, to reestablish yourself. And we haven't quite done that yet as African Americans on this us? continent. Right. What's to stop us now from being African American? Say it again. What, what's to stop us now, right now, from getting into our culture? Hey, we we're should. Trying out we European, should. We're trying to out European, That's right. Europeans. That's right. Here we are with kinky hair, dark skin, right. wide nose, and thick lips, and trying to be Europeans. Yes. We got to be joking. <laughs> yes. We're tripping. Yes. All right. Yes. Bravo. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Like, like to read. And he, he's correct about that. But when you live in a culture where you don't see yourself, that will happen to you. You see, your mind becomes conditioned. And you, be, you, become, you begin to cooperate with your own oppression. I like to reemphasize, you know, I my wife so. said that she didn't have a preference whether a person was black or white. And, and I felt the same way. The important thing is that people like each other and you know they they come together by whatever means you know and they fall in love okay okay, okay. uh 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 see so, uh, a white guy a european guy married to um uh, uh, a so-called black woman we're not black yet we're oreos you know oreo cookie oreos right? oreos you have black on the outside white on the inside well, I think I serve the derogatory. Uh, uh, well, 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 it's true. No because, because see white man is a way of thinking mm. uh, uh, the white guy knows himself he got hundreds of years of culture, of culture experience, and here's the here's the here's the black woman. I uh, have no. She she refused to accept the culture. We are cultural degenerates. So how's he going to respect her? Call her on the air. Hello. Hmm. Yes. Speak up. Uh, my name is Teresa. I'm calling from Baltimore, and I think interracial relationships are great. And why wasn't the theme white men and black women? Is my first question. Why what? Pardon me. I didn't hear you. You say interracial marriages are great, yes. and why, why aren't we doing uh, black men and white women? Yes. Okay. Why wasn't the same white men and black women? Maybe we will someday. We did this because huh. Dr. Grant. Uh, and another and thing. God also said gonna... love thy neighbor. He just didn't say love the yellow, the purple, and the orange. Okay. Are you, are you black or white, caller? I'm white. Are you married to a white or black man? Black. You're married to a black a, man. I'm a child. 
I'm sorry? I have a child by a black man. Okay. We have to talk about symbols of power and status. Go ahead. Because white people represent power and status in this country. And so we go after the symbol of power and status. When we cannot acquire it in the, in the marketplace, then we go out to other places, mm -hmm. you know, to get that symbol. And I think when a black man walks down the street with a white woman, he, he thinks of himself uh, as having some sort of power or status because he did not acquire it in the marketplace. And with black women, of course, uh, marrying white men, it's not always necessary that he is looking for status, okay, because he might be, it might be said of him that he might have his... Uh, uh, he might have his whore with him, okay? Mm. It might be misinterpreted. But I think we better talk about power and status when we talk about relationships and why people select other people. And in this country, white power. Caller, to answer your question, if you'll allow me to, the reason we're not doing the other show is because, as uh, Dr. Grant pointed out, the, uh, the uh, relationships between black women and white men is on the increase. Those relationships are on the increase where the other one is uh, uh, statistically on the decrease. But maybe someday we'll do that show, and maybe you and your husband can be part of our audience. Right. Uh-huh. Okay? In yeah. Essence Magazine, we said 98% of black women still marry black men. Mm -hmm. We'll be back. Tuesday at 9, Inette Miller tells us about her midlife affair that almost destroyed her. For free tickets, call 664-3000. Are you straight? Would you all calm down a minute? My gosh, seven from the bottom. $399. Dialing for dollars on channel 13. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here, our last four digits on this call, 4985. 49857 bottom, $399. That's the count of the amount. A reminder again that a week from today, Artie Donovan, who has written a book about his life in the National Football League and his days with the Baltimore Colts when things were fun back here on Sunday afternoons. He'll be here next Wednesday. You must be part of that studio audience or our home viewing audience. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. No answer, the last four digits, 4985. Calling a number in Dundalk today. We'll add $13 to our jackpot, and our next call will be worth $412. $412. If you'd like seats to the Artie Donovan Show, and as I mentioned before, we've got some surprises planned. I think you're gonna have a real fun hour. You've seen Artie on other shows and on this program a few times. 664-3000, say I wanna be there with Artie Donovan. 664-3000, we've got pastries for you. Delicious, freshly baked goods from the New System Bakery. All of our friends on West 36th Street in the heart of Hamden, Maryland. That's the number to call, 664-3000. And we'll be back with more of our show on white men and black women after this word from one of our really nice friends. Hospital Center Auxiliary invites you to help brighten the forthcoming holiday season by joining us for the Circle of Light Ceremony on Monday, November 23rd at 5 p.m. Lights can be dedicated in honor of or in memory of a loved one and will illuminate the Circle of Lights tree at the hospital entrance. Your donations are tax deductible. For further information, please call 682-7482. Thank you. All right, your comment, please. Well, I've dated quite a few white men, and I found them very interesting because when I went out with some black men, uh, we was getting out of a car, and I'm waiting for him to open the door for me. How, girl, what you still sitting there for? Aren't you going to get out the car? You know, and the white dude, they held the door, held the coat for me, put the order in for me that I wanted to eat. They were really nice yeah, people. But with all due respect to, to this gentleman you were dating, it has got it must be possible that somewhere out there, in Maryland, there is a black man who would have opened the door for you, who would know how to order too. You were just, you know, the guy you were dating at that time was a loser. No, he opened the door for me, but he went in first. Well, <laughs> he won't give you all the room in the world. No. I mean, you know, okay. For instance, the white man that I have, men that I have Sounds dated. Sounds like a cowboy movie, the white man, <laughs> uh, the black man. Had money, and you know, he used his money to make a business. Well, the black men that I have dated did not do this. 
they were too busy spending it instead mm -hmm. of trying to make something of themselves. So are you suggesting that the white men you've met are more responsible yes. with, and more polite and so forth? Yes. Okay. Any comments? Gwen, you... Yeah, there's, there's quite a difference between people who operate at the survival level and those people who are in charge. Uh, Audrey Edwards, uh, who at Essence Magazine, wrote a piece in which she said, black men, uh, uh, white men have reached an economic level where they can afford to be nice, if you will. Uh, my brothers are in the struggle, and most of them are unemployed. 47% are in prison. I mean, they are up against it. I said, what we're looking for, uh, we, we're not going to get. What we're going to have to do is begin to put our backs to the wheel and sort of be there as an asset to our men the way we have been historically. I mean, my great-grandmother scrubbed as many floors, brought as much money into the family pool, and we worked together. We lived an egalitarian life. Women, black women worked as hard as black men. We kind of see the pie in the sky when I die kind of attitude. Now, we, we've got to know where we've come from, and we've come from a strong work ethic, and we work together. And I said, now, well, all of a sudden, we have to have it different. We, we, we're living in a dream world. Things are just about the same. Well, I, not, I came from a mixed family. My father was part Chinese, Cherokee, Caucasian. Uh, but, um, Your father was all those things? <laughs> yeah. He was black and Indian and a white guy? Yeah. But if you looked at him, you wouldn't know what color he was. I mean, you know. And I was always raised up with white people, mostly. I hung up with the white race. The gentleman behind you suggests one. you're trying to be white instead of black. Oh, no. <laughs> it doesn't matter because, okay, all y'all men get in your clothes the same way. And on that note, we'll go to LaVon. <laughs> go ahead. Did you want to say something? Yeah, well, um, you know, we're here in this country, and I think we, we, it's, it's easy to think back to Africa as being where black people are from, but in this country, black people are from lots of places in the world. And I see, you know, I hear, this sort of disturbs me that everyone wants to be so separate and so against each other and stay that way. Because I think, you know, as black people, we're really truly very mixed people. And, and I think that maybe we should start trying to develop some pride about that and not totally, um, try and reject the American culture, what we call the white culture, because that is part of our culture. It's part of everyone's well, I, culture. I, I, and I beg to differ with that, because I believe African Americans ought to identify with Mother Africa. You well, know, I'm it's not very, saying important, not, very important I'm, for our well, wait psyches. A minute. I'm not saying not to identify with mm -hmm. and not to be proud of it, but also to, to embrace all the other parts of a person's self. The reason self. we can't embrace all the other parts is because of white racist America. You can't yes. embrace your killer. You can't embrace your rapist. Why you can't, can't embrace... You? Because we've tried it in churches. Black people have been historically very loving people, mm -hmm. and they've gotten raped, uh, they've gotten lynched. Uh, so we've got to start dealing with some of the racism that's going on in white society. Hello? Caller, you're on the air, Stop yes. making the burden on black people. Caller, you're on the air. Hello? You're on. I'm waiting. You're on. Okay. Hello? Hello? You're on. Okay. Speak. I am direct. My name is Jackie, and I'm from Baltimore. Hi, Jackie. Jackie, yes. turn your television down, darling. <laughs> it's down. Okay. Okay. You're almost out of time now. Okay. Speak. I, I am directing my my um, question to that black man, the very first black man that was in the audience, and he told Cheryl <laughs> to have patience. I don't think that's fair because I have had patience. I've dealt not with every black man out here, but I have dealt with just about everybody <laughs> just about but I, I should say that it's not the thought of having patience is what you if you run into someone whether he's black red green or orange or whatever colors and if he makes you happy that's who you take mm -hmm. very positive I wish, I wish it were that easy well we know it's not that easy caller you're on the air it's not that hello easy. yes my name is Stephanie yes Stephanie and I'm from the metropolitan area. Yes, Stephanie. In Virginia. Yes, Stephanie. What would you like to say? And uh, well, I, well, I was in high school during like the early '60s. I say about '65. Right. Mm -hmm. During that time, yellow women were quote the the gorgeous women, and the darker black woman with the nappy hair because the Jerry girl wasn't out there <laughs> was not really looked upon or treated like the yellow women were. Also, I sang in a band, an all-white band, OK? 
okay? Now, the black women would chase my fat behind. But the white fella would bring me books of poetry that I was not exposed to. He would take me places that black fellas were not into at that particular time. Now, we cannot blame uh, the black man for this, but as a people, we were not exposed to a lot of things. And then, during this day and time, you have a lot of black men that are not in the home. You have a lot of single black women raising children, so the little black fellas don't have too much to look up to as far as uh, the black man himself. And who would, who would, in essence, teach them to be responsible and things like that. Mm -hmm. But um, basically, I guess what I'm saying is, also, I, did, I was going to a black school. And I uh, did not want to go to a black college because I didn't want to be treated inferior to a yellow woman because I was dark complected. Mm -hmm. so, but now that black is beautiful, I'm supposedly gorgeous. But it's still a and are you? of what's in your head, what you've been exposed to, and what you've learned. Are you gorgeous? The fellow that was talking about the Oreo cookie type thing, that's a cop out in a bunch of bulls. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Before we go, caller, are you gorgeous? Of course I am. All right. We'll be back in a moment. <laughs> Wednesday at 9, Pro Football Hall of Famer Art Donovan makes us howl. For free tickets, call us now at 664-3000. Richard's Wardrobe, provided by J.S. Edwards Limited, Fine Men's Clothing, and the Hilton and Plaza Tight Store. If you're interested, the Center for Interracial Counseling and Psychotherapy offers this wonderful guide for the racially and culturally mixed. It's $11. If you're interested in it, you should call the show office. And LaVon is going to leave some of these. Don't forget to read the latest Essence magazine with Dr. Gwendolyn Goldsby Grants, Just Between Us column. It's hot. She's hot. And she speaks to you in here just as well as she's speaking today. And you do speak nicely. Before you leave, final comments now on this phenomenon of guess who's coming to dinner and so forth. And some of the controversy that's been introduced today. What do you think about it, Gwen? I feel like my message to people is that whoever it is that makes you happy, no matter what color they are, be they polka dot or whatever, if, they're, if you are happy with that person and happy with yourself, it doesn't make any difference what color they are. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Mrs. Elder? Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, my comment is that the people came to dinner several hundred years ago in my family, and so these interracial couples and bonds were found, and all of them weren't rape and hostile acts. Some of them were acts of love, and marriages born out of love. And so, and I'm the product of that, and so I have to, and I, and I have found peace in myself with the black part and the white part, and whatever other part may be floating around there, and I wish, and I know that peace can exist between people of different races and colors because it exists in me. And so I would like to leave people with, with that, I guess, knowledge that that can happen, and I would like to see that happen. I'd just like to say that uh, I'm very proud to be a part of Levine's family, and I, I really feel that her family has really enriched mine. You could cry, couldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. And I, and I think one That's way we can do this, nice. all that they said is very beautiful, but we need to work at it. One way we can do this is through the media. We need more positive presentations of African Americans on this media. I said because the selections also come from the presentations that mm -hmm. we give. All the presentations that we give are negative usually of black people usually mugging somebody or on drugs. I mean, who wants to marry the stereotype? We've got to get rid of that through this media, and I commission the media to start right now. All right, we have a caller. Caller, you. you have about 30 seconds to make your final comment. Are you there, line two? Hello? If you'd like to make a call, please hang up and dial again. <laughs> if you need further help, hang up and then dial your operator. Excellent. Wasn't that <laughs> one of the more provocative statements? Are you surprised that this was as controversial? There were some things here that, that I, w I wasn't sure would come out, you know, about you're trying to be too white, stop trying to do that. And, and some of the comparisons that I think were made today. Oh, I'm the, I'm, the issue of race is controversial from the Supreme Court selection down to the job selection at, uh, at uh, 
uh, Kentucky Chicken franchise. I, no, I think we've got to start dealing with these issues more openly and honestly. Well, we we, we, we're stereotypically dealing with them. We're not honestly dealing with them, and that's our problem. I'm glad we we throw that. up the stereotypes and not right. deal with real people. Tomorrow morning at 9 on People Are Talking, join one of the country's most renowned experts in the field of infertility, Dr. Sherman Silver, who will be answering your questions. He's got some new information that might help infertile couples conceive at last. That's tomorrow morning at 9. People are talking. Thank all of you for being so terrific today. Bye. Bye.